afternoon, everyone. I know people are still joining us, but it is quarter past 12, so uh, I'd like to make a start. Thank you so much for joining us for News and Prayer Live from the Middle East with SAT7 and New Wine United Breaks Out. My name is Rachel Fadipe, and I'm the Executive Director of SAT7 UK. I'm here today with my colleague, Martin Thomas. Thank you, Rachel. It's great to be here today, and we're really excited about sharing with you how people in the Middle East and North Africa are finding joy in the midst of international crises as well as personal tragedies. We're joined today by special guests from across the SAT7 family and we'll be hearing from them throughout the event. We're delighted to welcome Rita Elmoinea, SAT7's international CEO, originally from Lebanon, and a panel of guests from Egypt, Iran, Cyprus and Turkey who will introduce themselves later. Now, as some of you know, we've been running news and prayer live events on Zoom throughout lockdown. But today's event is an extra special one because we're teaming up with New Wine, who would normally be holding their United Summer Festival in Peterborough. Now, at last year's New Wine, we launched our Choose Joy campaign and invited people to come into our pop-up studio to help us to make a series of special videos telling the stories of Middle Eastern Christians who were finding joy in the midst of hardship and suffering. So here is one of those stories voiced by people, maybe even you, at New Wine last year. Mary from Egypt experienced inconceivable loss when her husband and unborn baby were killed by a suicide bombing at St Mark's Cathedral in Alexandria on Palm Sunday 2017. But despite her unimaginable pain, she is starting to find joy again. My husband Kareem was a wonderful man. He lived a normal life. But, but his heart was in heaven. heaven. He told me once that I would be the wife of a martyr but I didn't believe him. He was 43 when he died. We were, we were holding hands just outside the church when, when the blast went off. I was lifted into the air and thrown to the ground. I was aware of going to the hospital. I was two and a half months pregnant at the time, but I had to have six hours of surgery. And the baby didn't survive. Kareem had a brain hemorrhage and the bleeding wouldn't stop. He died in hospital after nine days. They told me I was going to die too, but I didn't. So God must have had a purpose for keeping, keeping me alive. alive. Before Kareem died, he told me, if anything happens to me, I, I want, want you to, to go, go to the church, to the church and, and, serve. and serve. When, when I, I go, go to church, church, I feel a joy that's inexpressible. And can't be compared to anything else. Even, even spending, spending time, time with my husband. husband. It's the unexplainable joy that can only come from God. Tell someone you love how much they mean to you. It was an amazing testimony. Now, Mary spoke of an unexplainable joy that can only come from God. And today, we're going to share more about how God is using even the most difficult situations to bring joy into people's lives. Now, Romans 8, 28 tells us that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It's very easy for us to look at people's circumstances, perhaps even our own, and to feel despair over all the difficulties and, and pressures. But our prayer is that today we'll be able to look beyond the often negative headlines and to see that God is at work for good in people's lives. Now, some of you are already familiar with SAT7, but I can see from the chat, we've got some people who are coming across SAT7 for the first time. We're, great, we're very pleased to have you with us. So I'll tell you a little bit about SAT7 as we start today. SAT7 is a unique Christian satellite and digital media network that has been broadcasting across the Middle East and North Africa for 24 years in the languages of Arabic, Farsi and Turkish and has a regular viewership of over 25 million people. Our diverse range of faith-filled programmes bring life-changing moments of joy to our viewers in contexts of daily hardships and restrictions, as well as major crises, including war and persecution. And now, of course, the latest crisis to hit the region is COVID-19. 
SAT7 is well used to working in challenging contexts where believers are unable to worship freely, isolated without fellowship and living in danger. While for most Christians in the West, these are new experiences, for believers in the Middle East and North Africa, the COVID-19 virus is just intensifying trials they already know only too well. Mm. Thank you, Rachel. So it's in this context that I'm joined today by Rita Elmenea, who became our first female international chief executive last year. Rita, welcome to our special News and Prayer Live in partnership with New Wine. Thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. So Rita, you were born in Lebanon and you grew up during the Civil War from the mid-1970s onwards. We just wanted to ask first, what were your first memories and what was life like growing up in Lebanon in the aftermath of the war? It's amazing sometimes to see how God makes things beautiful uh, in the midst of disaster and death and uh, insecurities. Death, yes, I experienced death in my family during the war in Lebanon, insecurity because my father was in the Christian militia going every day, fighting with his, you know, like arms on, armors on. And I was like so afraid, all, you know, all the time that will I see him again? But in the midst of, you know, death and insecurity, um, God protected me. And maybe I am today with Set7 because of these hardship and pain that I've been through in my life. I think uh, my dad also played a vital role uh, for me loving television because um, a lot of times when the bombs are heavy outside and we're scared, my sister and I, and uh, we're in the bunkers, no electricity, he wanted to entertain us and in a way uh, distract us from what's happening outside. So he will bring a television set and it was black and white. So you can guess my age. And he will hook it to a car battery because we don't have electricity. And he let us watch television all the time. So it became a refuge for us. So watching maybe the Egyptian soap operas, cartoons, I don't remember much, but I remember that we were forgetting what's happening outside and um, having, you know, like fun a little bit. And when the bombs are louder and heavier, my dad will come and turn the volume up. So he will distract us. But really, when this, in the midst of this pain and hardship, it's maybe I hope that people will understand me when I say, I don't want my life to be different. If God today comes and asks me, Rita, you will be born in a country, no war, no death, uh, hardship, pain, nothing. You will be in America or in the UK or whatever. I'll say no. It's because of the hardship and pain, sleeping in bunkers, having you know, insecurities, that God gave me the heart today to serve the people of the Middle East and North Africa, like the story of Mary that you mm. heard today, and be there for them, um, to give them the message of love and hope, which is in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Well, we know that you've been with Sat7 uh, from the very beginning and were the first presenter to appear on screen in 1996. Um, I wonder, do you still remember what it was like all those years ago when you were the first presenter? Yes, I still remember. Um, uh, it was interesting because um, we were two hours a week uh, as a channel, Arabic channel. So I don't know what, how we called ourselves channel where we were broadcasting only two hours a week. And I was uh, the presenter and the producer for a children program. The amazing thing that from the beginning, I was having fun and wanting to serve the children with the word of God, telling them, you know, like stories from the Bible or praying with them on the screen. But I never, ever anticipated the success of this program or the success of Set7. Like hundreds and hundreds of letters. We didn't have like emails those days in 1996, like letters, just, you know, opening them and see like the impact that Set7 has on millions of viewers. And um, now after like 24 years, looking back, see, wow, we didn't have like a big studios. We were renting outside. We didn't have a lot of people. We, we in fact had a cameraman. We hired a cameraman, but we didn't have a camera. So you can imagine how we, over the years, God brought us so far and now seeing not just one channel but two and three and four and 24 hours seven not just two hours a week 
Thank you, Rita. And we know that, that we're going to be hearing from you more later about why you think SAT7 is so strategic. But I just wondered if you could maybe sum it up in a couple of words, why your passion for SAT7's ministry seems to be so stronger than ever. It's the testimonies. It's the testimonies that we read and hear every day, every day from people impacted from the programs we're broadcasting. It's the testimonies from Iran. When somebody said, I lost everything during the war, but I gained him, I gained Jesus Christ. When another person says, through you, I learned about Christianity and Christianity, not as a religion, but as Christ, a personal relationship with him. Or after two years of watching you, I gave my life to Jesus. You hear from Turkey, from the Arab world, or you are our church at home when it's not safe to go outside. And when I say safe to go outside, it's not just because of COVID-19. COVID-19 has been one year or like maybe months. It's not safe because of war and hardship and pain and persecution. Set seven became our church at home. It's because people saying our children are safe with you. You are teaching them and also like letting them know about God. And you can tell now that I'm, <laughs> I'm passionate when I talk about stories of people in the Middle East that I, I, I've been there. I know, I know that. that face trouble, persecution, um, maybe a lot of times poverty, uh, wars, but it's finding their hope in Jesus through the programs we produce. This is why I'm passionate about the word of that seven. That's fantastic. Well, as I said, we'll be hearing more from Rita later. Thank you for now. Uh, but right now it's time for some headlines from across the region. Thank you, Martin, and great to hear you, Rita. The Middle East and North Africa has been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. Iran was one of the first countries to be affected and last month re-entered lockdown after a second wave of the virus. The country's president, Hassan Rouhani, estimated that 25 million Iranians have been infected with COVID-19. COVID-19 is also spreading fast in Yemen a country blighted by years of civil war. Around half of Yemen's medical facilities have been destroyed and those that remain are just not equipped to respond to this virus. On top of this, Yemen has been hit by a locust invasion that is causing massive crop destruction. It really is a desperate situation there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the region is also feeling the economic fallout of the coronavirus shutdown. Lebanon, the economy and the currency have been in free fall forcing more and more of the population into poverty. And on social media, we're hearing of families exchanging and bartering the most basic items of shoes and clothes, maybe in exchange for food or, or nappies or milk. Egypt's been struggling to balance the needs to reopen the economy whilst containing the, the virus. Um, and as in, like other countries, many um, cases of COVID-19 have gone unreported. Medical staff have spoken out about the lack of PPE and poor working conditions and as a result have faced threats and even detention. And we do know that over 100 doctors have died from coronavirus. Wow. As well as the impact of COVID-19, conflict continues to engulf parts of the Middle East. The situation in Libya is becoming ever more complex as other countries struggle for inf influence. A peace deal for Syria remains elusive after nine years of civil war. Recently, Turkey's President Erdogan had significantly and controversially ordered that Hagia Sophia, Istanbul's fifth century Christian basilica and a world heritage site should become a mosque again. It's a very sad note to end these few headlines on, but they do highlight the complexity of the region SAT-7 operates in. Now we've already heard a lot today, so I think it may be a good moment to, to have a, a moment of just quiet and to pray where you are for this region, for the region of the Middle East and North Africa. Prayer points will come up on the screen to assist you. We'll just have some music and just take a moment to pray. Thank you so much. Still, 
Amen. Well, when COVID-19 first started sweeping through the Middle East early this year, SAT7 mobilised as a lifeline of faith, support and practical help for its millions of viewers. And while many other Christian agencies were forced to scale back their activities, SAT7's ability to resource and encourage viewers in their own homes became vital. While it was essential for SAT7 to protect our own staff and follow safety restrictions in each country where we have stewards studios like in cyprus egypt lebanon turkey and the uk it was really important for us to continue as full a schedule of programming as possible as the covid19 situation began to emerge sat7 quickly adapted its programming some programs were filmed from presenters homes while small production teams operated in the studios with safety measures in place. Live programming was prioritised over recorded to deliver up-to-date information and personal interaction. The key message to viewers has been, you are not alone. With millions of people stuck at home, SAT7 adjusted its content to address their needs, focusing on four areas. Public health awareness, physical and mental well-being, spiritual support, and education. Perhaps most importantly, the programmes have been connecting viewers to support and pray for one another. This is one of the reasons why SAT7 saw a 31% increase in audience engagement over the first five months of this year compared to last year. And we're going to show a short clip now from one of our Iranian presenters sharing how SAT7 has been supporting young viewers during this time. Do listen out for the amazing viewer messages she shares at the end. Hi, welcome to Sat7 Park Studio in Cyprus. I am Parastu and here we are in the set of Hashtag, a weekly live show for teenagers. It's been around two months that the whole world is in quarantine mode, which is obviously hard for so many people, as it is something that we've never experienced before. In Sat7 Parts, we decided to continue our weekly live show with limited crew members, since we believe that the message of gospel is the source of hope to many people. We wanted to be with our viewers, to send them the message of hope and let them know that God is love and He is with us in every situation. And with Him, we can get through any problems. In Hashtag, we share the tips on how to stay healthy and safe during the pandemic, as well as giving our viewers ideas on things they can do at home 
to use their time in a good and productive way, such as sharing weekly Bible stories, and also reminding them on all blessings and things in life which we should be grateful for. Many new viewers join us through this tough time and enjoyed our live shows that we broadcast weekly. A young 12 years old boy sent this message through WhatsApp to us. I've recommended hashtag to another 40 people so that they can participate in your show and the game. Hopefully tomorrow, I can also ask my classmate in school to watch the program as long as I can get the permission from my teacher. Hopefully even more people will participate in your game and watch the program. And a 16 years old Afghan girl wrote to us, Hashtag is a program that gives hope to teenagers. Even more so now that people are in their home so many hours. I have learned a lot through the Bible stories and I have come to the conclusion that God is with us anytime and place. All we need to do is have faith in Him and never forget that He loves us. We need to live our life God's way and love God through the difficult and happy time and never lose our hope. And at the end, I want to send you a huge thank you. It is because of your prayers and support that we can be here today and share the God's love and His work to millions of Farsi speaking people. God bless you. I hope you found that really uh, encouraging and exciting to hear, particularly about those testimonies. Now we're going to speak to some more special Sat7 guests who are going to tell us and share with us about the work they do and the impact Sat7 is making in people's lives. So thank you everyone for joining us. Some of us, some of you I know are joining us even today from holiday. Can you briefly introduce yourself and, and share what you do with Sat7? And that question goes firstly to Reza. Hello everyone. I hope that all of you and your families and friends are safe during this unprecedented time. My name is Reza Jafari. I was born and raised in Iran and uh, since 2004 I am residing in a way in exile in Cyprus and since ever uh, since 2003 I'm in Cyprus and I have been blessed, privileged and lucky enough to be part of SAT7 journey uh, from 2004 up to this date and uh, currently I'm uh, a creative manager at SAT7 Parse uh, which I'm mainly dealing with the visual aspect and how appealing the programs look like on the TV for the quality of the production and uh, post-production and also I am um, extremely privileged and blessed to be a presenter of a live, a weekly live show called Signal, which I'm hoping to talk more about it later on. That's fantastic. Thank you, Reza. Um, same question to Gulsum. Hello, everybody. I'm Gulsum. I'm from Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm the Deputy Executive Director of Sat7 Turk. I uh, started uh, working for Turk7 13 years ago as an editor in the project called Living Church. And since then, I'm a part of Sat7 family. Mm, that's fantastic. Um, over to George. Hello, uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is George and I'm originally from Cairo, Egypt. Uh, I studied theology and uh, although coming from Egypt with the biggest Christian minority, like uh, all of uh, my life, as a, I remember as a child, like we didn't have a chance to introduce the church and the, the faith to even like our colleagues and the people who we lived with. And when I heard about Sat7, like opening a window for the church to witness, that was like a joy, like something that I was very excited to, to join. And uh, I was blessed like uh, to be able and allowed to put some biblical knowledge and, and some of that passion into programs, uh, helping people and producers and uh, presenters. So I'm working now in the capacity of the programming director for the Arabic channels, like working with uh, different producers, different offices, just to uh, discuss together and develop the programs that can suit and introduce Christian faith to our world. To the mm. world. Thank you, George. And finally, to Nicoletta. 
Hello everyone, my name is Nicolette Michael. I work in SAT7 office here in Nicosia, Cyprus uh, since 2015. So uh, my background is international relations and politics and while working in the foreign affairs sector uh, and wondering what I wanted to have as purpose in my life, I came across SAT7. And since then I'm working uh, with SAT7 colleagues ac across the MENA that we're assessing the needs of the people and we're designing programming to respond respond to those and implementing projects with our offices in Turkey, Egypt, Lebanon, UK and Cyprus. Thank you so much Nicoletta and uh, everyone for your introductions. It's really great to get a sense of who you are and how long you've been with SAT7. So I'm going to drop you straight in with a really tough question, okay? Um, so uh, how do you see SAT7 bringing positive change and even joy to individuals, churches and society across the Middle East and North Africa? There we are. So we'll go around in the same order, I think, to keep it easy. So should we start with uh, with Reza? Yeah, that, that, that's a very interesting and difficult question. And um, uh, as all of us are agreed that Middle East has been uh, you know, through a lot of difficult times in the past decades or centuries, in, and specifically talking when it comes to freedom in all form, and especially nowadays in freedom of belief, Middle East has always been hostile and some countries like Iran in the past few years, uh, uh, the, op the oppression and the amount of suppression on, on Christians and minorities was really unbelievable. Hearing the stories in um, about the arrest, about the pressure on the people simply because they want to follow Jesus was uh, kind of un unbelievable. And Sat7 Pars, uh, as, as my colleagues mentioned, um, broadcast something that is, uh, I think, one of the most needed things among the people that losing hope, they're under pressure, they have no refuge. So SAT7 has this unique opportunity through broadcasting the message of uh, love, uh, the message of hope, the, the real hope, the one that is not relying on the the temporary things, but the, the everlasting joy, hope, and salvation to the people that are desperately not only needing needing it, but they're seeking it very much. And as as pressure is uh, growing in, in Iran, the, the more we're getting response on people that not only they want the hope, but they're seeking and they're, they're thirsty to receive that. And SAT7 is, is enabled through its programming uh, uh, shared the message of gospel in a, uh, and, and Jesus Christ and salvation through a lot of diverse programmings. So, and another unique part of Sat7 Pars is that is a channel for all denominations. We do not take side. We do not get involved in anything else. We are just focusing on uh, broadcasting God's love uh, through programming on satellite. So, I think uh, people in Iran really need that. And as Rita in the beginning said. Uh, the testimonies that we receive is a reflection of what God is doing through Sat7 Parse and other channels in Sat7 Parse. So we are confident that God is working through this ministry and this television because of the testimonies we receive on a daily basis. Thanks, Reza. Sorry to cut you short. Gulsum. Yes, uh, besides COVID, like almost every country is now in Turkey as well, economic and social problems bega began to grow. The Turkish lira is losing value against dollar and euro pretty fast. There is also rise in femicides in Turkey. Last week, a young woman was brutally killed by her boyfriend, Pnar Gültekin. As such, seven Turk, we always emphasize that whether we are minority or not, we do not live in a bubble in the countries where we live and broadcast. As a holistic one sat seven ministry, we are concerned with the problems of society. We have many social impact programs. We have women's programs. For example, we give the addresses that women can go when they are in a difficult situations. We have even a self-defense program that teaches women how to protect themselves physically from the attacks. Well, thank you, Gilson. It's really great to hear how you're bringing real change into, into those lives. Uh, I think it gets harder as we go through the panel to answer. <laughs> so, George, are you, uh, are you up for it? Yep. Um, I think I would say that uh, we are empowering Christians by just giving them a voice. 
there is a need, like people need to be here and uh, to, to introduce themselves and to correct the, uh, the, the misconceptions and the lies about them. And this is not possible, even in the countries where there are lots of Christians like Lebanon, Egypt and the East Syria. But it's even harder for people in North Africa, where to be a North African uh, 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 citizen means like naturally to be a Muslim. So we, we receive letters from uh, some people there who says that just by watching you and hearing the, the gospel in my dialect, that the joy comes that I knew that there are other Christians, that I'm part of a body, part of a, a, a bigger mm -hmm. group. So by doing that, by being a voice, and also like something that makes me proud of what we are doing is the uh, sitting away or being a model, uh, like lots of people who work for Sat7, like being released to establish other ministries or to work in other ministries or to, 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 to give uh, a start for uh, other Christian ministries. So being working for that model that uh, uh, like paved the way for others is something. And I would uh, also like uh, highlight what Gulsum was saying, like uh, in a time of crisis and in a time of persecution, uh, it's uh, easily for a minority to feel a victim and, and to shrink. But when you talk to them and speak about being the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and that you have a message and you're ambassador for a change, uh, you are just taking them from that victim position to make them feel that we have a message, we are responsible for a change and even empowering them in that sense. Thank you, George. Now, Nicoletta, you've got the hard job to finish the question. I think I will, uh, instead of finishing, I will start from the beginning. So, summarizing... Um, a teeny bit loud, just a teeny bit. That's it. Don't worry. Okay. So, I will summarize, I will start by saying uh, the SAT7 mission for all those that are with us and might not know it. So, SAT7 mission is to, vision is to see a growing church in the Middle East and North Africa, confident in the Christian faith and witness, serving the community and contributing to the good of society and culture. So, driven by our vision, you have heard from my colleagues what wonderful things that Seven does as a holistic ministry. We are by ministering to the people across their needs in life, spiritual, emotion, emotional, uh, psychological, and physical. I think a very important job we have at Sat7 is to minister to children's uh, needs. So when it comes to education, for instance, in Sat7 we are concerned of losing a generation of children that had never the opportunity to receive education. So since uh, 2015 we're producing educational programming under the name of my school for the Arab speaking population, where we're uh, trying to teach children Yes, uh, maths, English, but we want to equip them with critical thinking to be creative, to restore or not to lose their hope about their future. And at the same time, we're investing a lot in their parents. So we're equipping uh, and enabling the environment around them. And uh, highlighting, Rachel, uh, what, how that ties in with the COVID. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit the MENA, the responsibility and the role of SAT-7 was high, as in addition to all of the refugee and internally displaced children, we had millions of children staying at home. So SAT-7, through its satellite and digital media, virtually enter all the informal settlements in Lebanon, in Jordan, and all the apartment blocks in Algeria, bringing education and, and spiritual support to all those children and families that they were needing them. And honestly, the impact that we've seen, it's like moving and it's what keeps us still going. Thank you so, so very much. Um, we're running low on time, um, but we had asked if you had a couple of testimonies that you might be willing to share. So I wondered if, um, you might, somebody might be able to share maybe just one story. Um, Reza or Nicoletta, did you want to fight it out between you, perhaps? Um, you mean each one of us share one? You can one share person. one story for us, Reza, perhaps. That's very difficult because we have so many I know. powerful testimonies that it's hard to pick one. Uh, but I will, I will just uh, uh, share one. Uh, Yasmin from Iran on 13th of June 2019 sent this testimony uh, to the Signal Light program and she wrote, due to the lack of um, suitable employment, my husband is forced to work in a fruit shop and every night I chop 
green beans for sale in the store. You have many depths in life and it is hard. My, my little girl had cancer of the brain and our landlord is constantly pressuring us to either vacate or agree to higher rent. One time I received an advertisement about selling a kidney, part of my liver or the pupil of my eye. I got in touch and found out that there is less painful uh, following an eye operation as it is done using laser. So I was being tempted by the uh, prospect of selling my purple when Lord lifted me up in my face. The financial situation has not improved and the difficulties remain. Yet our, our uh, consultation uh, is in the Lord. The Holy Spirit has so many times kept me from staying, uh, straying and stumbling. And I gave thanks to God because I can see that my family are believers and their faith has caused them to, to lead uh, lives that are clean. I thank God for your network, for your programs, and for the teaching that we are able to access through your channel. Thank God that you call us and listen so patiently as we share our problems with you. Thank God for all the people who have helped to make it possible for us to stand in the midst of these life uh, difficult circumstances. Well, thank you so much, Reza. So we're going to um, end this section now. We had one last question, but what I might do is if the panel stays on, we may come back to that um, at the end when we, when we interview Rita. Um, yeah. So thank you for your time. Um, and uh, I know that everyone will keep praying for you and your teams in the coming mm. weeks. Yes, thank you. So we're going to break into small groups now to pray just for a, a couple of minutes. Um, and as you go into the breakout groups, you'll also see the prayer points that we're putting on the screen now in your chat area as well. Um, so when you get into your group, because time is short, just say hi and, and maybe go straight into prayer. We'll stay in these groups for maybe uh, two to just three minutes. And then the system will bring us back out again together where we're going to hear just a, a little bit more from Rita about why Sat7 is so strategic at this time. So let's pray. Thank you, Hugh.
Um, but it's uh, a really good time to take those few minutes to pray about what we've heard and to pray for the Middle East. I think everyone's back now. So we are going to return to part two of our interview with, with Rita. Are you still there, Rita? I can't see you anymore, but I trust you're there. Um, we heard earlier from Rita about her childhood and um, why she became involved with Sat Seven's ministry. Um, so, Rita, I had a, just a small question to ask you. Um, people often describe Sat Seven as strategic ministry, especially in terms of our reach across the region and impact in the lives of viewers. For you, what is it that is strategic about Sat Seven's reach and impact? Well, Sat7 is strategic because it's a Christian television for the people of the Middle East, by the people of the Middle East. So it's not an imported television station. It's not an imported you know, something from the West, like sharing the gospel and sharing the message of Christ. And Sat7 is reaching millions of people. I mean, uh, there, there never has been more people watching satellite than television in today. Because if you look across the region, there is a potential 400 million households that have, you know, like a satellite television and not just satellite television as well. You know, we are also on social media, people watching, you know, in their own homes, in their, you know, like uh, uh, rooms, you know, like uh, Christian television. And especially now with the COVID-19, that a lot of people staying at home, they are watching us. And it's impacting our programs, are impacting our society, impacting our children, impacting our women. There, there have been like two, between two and three million interaction a month with our set, uh, set seven channels across the channels, Turk and Pars and Arabic. So it's a great opportunity today, as you know, like my colleagues, you know, colleagues said, to share the hope the hope we have in Christ through satellite television and social media and praying that this hope one day will be transformed to be faith, faith for a better life, faith to be, you know, according to God's own heart or after God's own heart. Thank you, Rita. Now, you became international CEO a year ago and, um, and it's been quite a year. Um, what's been, particularly during the COVID pandemic, What's been your biggest challenge and fear during this time? That's just a small question. It's uh, COVID-19. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it, was, um, it, it was very hard to visit people. I'm a people person and like to visit. Zoom will not take place of the personal visitation or to have our meetings or, you know, like to work with the, you know, with our executive, uh, um, executive uh, board or international council. Um, we didn't have a lot of, you know, fellowship. But um, but also, um, I was a bit also worried that people will be disengaged, you know, like they're afraid they're at home, they will disengage. But I think, you know, we, we did well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know we're coming close to our formal ends, but I'm hoping people will indulge us if we ever run a little bit. Um, Rita, also, what's been the biggest source of encouragement and source of strength during this time? Well, there was a huge growth uh, of response to our channel. So people sitting at home, they're insecure, they're afraid, they want you know them, they want us to pray for them. So uh, it was like really a blessing to see how many people contacted us, and also I was very um, encouraged uh, personally from the reaction of the directors of channels because they said we're not gonna sit at home. We'll we'll take all measures in our studios. Uh, we'll wear our mask, we'll we do etc. etc. But we're not gonna stop producing and broadcasting to millions of people because this is the time where set seven is mostly needed. And personally, <laughs> I was very encouraged to stay a little bit at home. It's been crazy the past years, you know, flying around and you know to different countries. So I was very encouraged. I, I thought like it's a great opportunity for me personally to slow down a bit and be at home. Yes, it certainly wasn't the time for slowing down, was it? Now, this last question I would like to ask you, but I think perhaps we're going back to some of the panellists as well. So through lockdown, Christians in the UK have been learning to live out our faith in isolation. And as we're all now here on, on the call, um, sitting here in, in the UK, I'm sitting in Wiltshire, 
Uh, what is it that we can learn from people in the Middle East? Um, and how can we find joy in amongst all of this situation that we're in? Well, you heard like some stories today. My story, story of George and Kusum and Reza and Nicoletta and others. And I do, I do think that the stories of the Christians of the Middle East have many truths that could help the Christians in the UK, could help them to go deeper in their own faith. So we would love people to choose joy and sign up today to receive our joy in the midst photo book. This you know, like book will tell amazing stories of people who lived in hardship and pain, but yet they decided to find joy. And also would love people to share the joy. So if you can share about us, uh, about the Set7 ministry with your church, uh, maybe also showing our joy in the midst presentation or by booking a speaker, we're ready you know, to help you. And by joining this live call today, you have brought joy to me. Seeing a lot of people, they have the heart for the Middle East, even though that you're you know, from the UK or like sitting in a safe country, not with COVID-19, but safe country, you know, spiritually and you know, the, uh, religious wise. Uh, just, you know, like taking the time and, um, and spending Saturday afternoon with us today uh, is, means a lot to us. So it really, really means a lot to us that you support and pray you know, with us every single day, if you can. And uh, thank you, New Wine, and thank you, Rachel, for inviting me to speak thank today you. from my heart. Would, uh, would George like to add anything to, to that about how people in the UK can learn from people in the Middle East? Uh, it would be very quickly, like, uh, I was thinking about this, like, uh, during the, uh, the quarantine and everything, how we need each other and how we are uh, revive and, and, and live really to the maximum when we are touched by the love uh, from others. We need, uh, we need people. Like uh, if one thing like humanity learned from this is how much we are connected and how much we need each other. Mm. And I was thinking that it's in, here in the Middle East, like people, uh, although there is lots of uh, 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 difficulties, poverty, uh, injustice, and lots of things, but uh, we are part of that part of the world that we still value the community, value the uh, being together. And I would uh, uh, like encourage the church uh, uh, in the West, uh, believers in the UK to remember that, like in, in a world that is pushing us toward feeling how um, it's my rights, my, 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 my space, my own thing, is to rem remember that we belong to a bigger picture. We belong to the body of Christ. We belong to each other and we can be the hand uh, of God that uh, support the, the 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 smiling face of God, the uh, the joy that Rita was talking about. That we are responsible for that because people cannot feel God's love if they are not loved by us. Mm -hmm. People cannot uh, find the joy and support unless we uh, give a call or give a support or, or 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 say that we are the reflection of God's uh, love and God's hope. So uh, I wish to see that body of Christ like uh, uh, secured and, and encouraged to uh, know that we are belonging to a bigger, much bigger and much stronger picture. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to perhaps ask Gulson. Gulson's joined us from her vacation today. Did you want to share anything thinking about uh, people in Turkey? Uh, small congregations, isolation is not new concepts for Turkish Christ Christians. As soon as the corona crisis began, uh, those in the church carried their sermons to any platform they could find to people, uh, they could find to reach their people very fastly, actually. I saw that those uh, who could not go to the church for a long time attended the online church meetings. We were in close contact with church leaders and the congregations, and we gave many encouraging sermons and messages from TV during this period. I think we are used to staying connected as a small minority. Everybody called each other and asked during this period, what can I say that uh, just stay connected, no matter what, and share joy. Thank, thank you. you so much, Gulsum. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, George. Thank you, Gulsum. Thank you, Reza. Thank you, Nicoletta. I'm sorry we couldn't give you more time. I wish we could give and probably had a meeting with each of you for an hour. Um, there's been a few comments in the chat about how people can respond, and you'll see behind me 
Um, I won't attempt to point to it because I'll get the wrong direction. Um, some web links that you can go to, but also if you want to respond right now, text JOY to 87800 and we will give you a call back over the next week and help you learn more about how you can receive the JOY book that Rita mentioned and other ways that you can find out more about this incredible ministry. Um, <clears throat> we've, uh, we've had such a great opportunity today to hear from this ministry out in the Middle East, um, which is such a long way from our experience here in the UK. Yeah. So thank you, Martin. Thank you so much, Rachel, and to everyone who's been involved um, with today's event. Now, we're going to close our time together in a moment, uh, but because we're doing uh, this event in partnership with New Wine, I'd love to invite Mark Mellowish to pray for Rita, for other speakers, and especially for our viewers at this time. Now, Mark is, as you might well know, a senior pastor of St. Paul's Ealing and assistant national leader of New Wine, but he also lives not far away um, from our Iranian studio in London, and so he's offered to pray for us uh, as we end our time today. Mark, thanks so much for being with us today. Um, before you pray, I just wondered if you could share uh, what you found inspiring um, and challenging uh, about today and what you've heard. Martin, thank you so much. I mean, it, today has been, uh, it's been an hour full of um, hope and faith and courage I think Rita knocked me off my chair really when she said, I don't want to be safe in the UK or in America. It's persecution that strengthened my faith. Um, I'm, I'm humbled by the fact that um, uh, Moses was sent and um, uh, he said, well, what do I go with? And, and God said, well, what's in your hand? He said, a stick. And, and God used that, that staff, that shepherd's staff as a powerful tool and, and what we heard was that was that um, it's the Christians of the Middle East that are providing programs for the Middle East and providing hope for others. How humbling is that? And the 16-year-old's testimony. My conclusion is that God is with us all of the time. And um, my goodness, how humbling that is that we're spoken to by a 16-year-old who shows bravery and passion and love in that way. And um, I probably I just, I probably this reflects everybody on this call. I'm so grateful you let me pray, but I think we would all say how humbling it is to listen to this. Rita, God bless you in your international role as CEO. Uh, you are, my wife, Lindsay, is sitting here with me. We're both looking at you thinking the Lord is on you. And it's a wonderful thing. And you've, it's been humbling to listen to you today. And uh, Reza and Gulsum and George and Nicoletta, thank you for your inspiration and your commitment and what you're doing. And I would love to pray. I'd love to pray for you. But I'd love to pray that um, this message of this incredible ministry gets out across the churches in the West. And you get the support and the encouragement that you need for all that you're doing. So if I can just do that, Martin, is that okay? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Lindsay, for, for being with us too. Father, thank you. Thank you that Sat7 is giving voice to Christians across the Middle East and North Africa. Thank you for the way it's providing hope and it's sending um, messages of faith and encouragement and confidence Thank you for the way in which it's walking with those who are walking a lonely path. Thank you for the way in which it's providing family to people. Thank you for the way in which it is enabling people to grow in their faith wherever they are. Thank you, Lord, for the way in which it's providing practical help, safety for women who have been uh, mistreated or, mis uh, or uh, wrongly used. Thank you for the way in which it is educating the next generation the children to rise up and be followers of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for those who have uh, laid the foundations of this Sat7 ministry and for those who are continuing to build it. And we pray that it really will um, continue to grow and be blessed. Amen. 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 Um, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you to Lindsay for, for joining us at this time. Thank you to New Wine uh, for connecting uh, with us. Um, Thank you for those prayers and, and those words 
uh, of encouragement. I, I'm sure uh, they echo um, everyone else on their call. Um, and thank you for those who've been picking up their phones and texting. Um, as Mark was praying, it's great uh, to have your support at this time. Rachel. Thank you, thank you Martin. Thank you, Mark. Um, we're just going to end now with a lovely worship song sung by Miriam, a young girl from Iraq who was forced to flee her home uh, by Islamic State terrorists. Despite everything she went through, she expressed forgiveness for the militants and sang this song on Sat7 about her joy in knowing Jesus. Now you can find this and many other videos on the Sat7 UK YouTube page. Um, but this is just such a lovely way to end our time. So do so thank you so much for your partnership with Sat7 today.